What's up? Today I'm extremely excited about this video because we are going to start a completely new page of your chess journey, which is going to be extremely successful for you. I'm Grandmaster Igor Smirnov and I have found a universal opening for you that you can use both as white and as black and that oftentimes give you very quick and easy victory right out of the opening. And if that sounds too optimistic to be true, give me one minute and you'll be able to judge it yourself. Here's the thing. Some time ago, I recorded a video about an opening variation for black against white's first move pawn d4. And that video became very popular. I received a ton of positive feedback from you guys saying that you crushed your opponents in like half a minute of time. You already crushed some of the strong rivals of yours. And basically, the video was about the gambit variation where you gambit a pawn over here in the middle of the board. And for this one pawn sacrifice, you kind of turn the table around. Now, you are ahead in development, you're going to be attacking, and it is one who has to be careful defending their position. So I'm going to share it with you real quick. I'll provide a link to that video down below or somewhere at the top if you want to check it out later. But just uh, in a nutshell, I can show you the idea. So here, your plan overall is to castle queenside, castle here, because we'll see in a moment that it gives you a very active rook along the d-file. For example, if white plays e3, queen e7, we're going over the most common moves of white here, by the way. And here, as long as you castle queenside, that adds more power to uh, the fire of your attack. Now, you've got this active rook in an open file, which is always going to be unpleasant for white. For example, if white simply castles, and they often do, that actually fails to a very interesting tactics. Bishop takes h2, which is a discovered attack and check of the white's uh, king, therefore, you just got a winning material advantage here. And very often you can win games just like that. And even if white don't blunder this thing, you know, anyway, their position is unpleasant. They have to deal with this threat over the king side. You're going to attack them, you know, push the h pawn forward. And you have this easy attack for white. It's much harder to figure out what to do. And very often they go down badly. So here's the thing. If that variation was so effective and lots of you guys enjoyed it so much, here's what I thought about. What if we could find a way to make use of it as white? Because if it's so cool for black, if you can find a way to make use of it as white with an extra tempo, it's going to be completely crushing. And I'm happy to say that I found this way for you. Now we're playing white and our goal is to drag your opponent into our territory, into the gambit that we want. So how can you do this? One way to go about this is to start the game with the move pawn d3. I've checked the database and in most cases your opponent will respond pawn to d5. Now you continue with pawn e4 pretending like you just offer the trade here on e4 and in the vast majority of the cases your opponent happily takes here expecting you to recapture which looks like the only normal move for white to do and if white does then black will trade queens here force your king to move and will enjoy a good life but that's not what we want in fact we want to fool your opponent into thinking that way but in reality after your opponent captures on e4 we're gonna offer our gambit we're gonna play knight to c3 and after this exchange on d3 which is something that black usually does that's the gambit that we want and we got it with an extra tempo so again it's gonna be even more powerful now, strictly speaking, I'm not saying that this is something completely out of this world, never seen before. No, this is an opening variation called a Danced Pyrrhonent Gambit of Van Geet opening, something like that. Perhaps you've never heard of it, neither do I, which is great, because it means that your opponents aren't ready, aren't prepared completely against this variation. Anyway, let's explore what may possibly happen here. By the way, there is also another, an additional way to drag your opponent into the same gambit, which I like even more, and I'm gonna share it with you in, in a minute, but for now, let's just take a look at this position, the most critical position of this opening variation. Well, let's say black goes knight of six, the most common move, we play bishop g5, putting some pressure on this diagonal, but also preparing for our king to castle queenside, because that's part of our attacking plan. Now, black usually goes something like pawn e6. We keep playing our stuff, queen e2, preparing for our king to castle. Black goes bishop e7. In most cases, we castle queenside, and black already has to be careful. Some of your opponents will lightheartedly castle, just mimicking your moves. You castled, they want to do the same. But if they do, we already know that they fail for this bishop takes h7 tactics discovered attack. Stockfish says that it's better to trade on f6 first. Anyway, we could do this to keep Stockfish happy. And after that, you win the queen and you win the game. That's it. What if your opponent is very smart and he knows tactical motifs and all that stuff and he doesn't fall for this trap? Let's take a couple moves back. Well, then your opponent will probably want to cover their queen somehow so that it's not lost along the d-file. But then black is not going to have an easy life anyway. In this case, 
well, what do you do? Well, you, you just develop Nano 3. Now, like, thinks that it's safe to castle. It's not, but they think so. And you play Pawn H4. It's a very common move, which allows you for very different kinds of attacks in the future. So I would always recommend that you basically play this move H4. It supports your bishop just in case, and it also creates different tactical motifs. You can push the pawn forward. Sometimes you can also rush the other pawn forward, you know, along the G file. Your bishop is defending in case you want to play an ID4 and add more fuel to the fire. You know, so in different variations, this H4 move is extremely useful. Now, coming back to the usual stuff. In most cases, black still feels uncomfortable because they need to somehow, you know, unwrap their pieces on the queen side. They are still feeling uncomfortable around this opposition of your rook against their queen. And they usually play pawn c6, hoping for their queen to escape somewhere, you know, along this diagonal, so that they unpin their pieces finally. And now we've got another cool combo, which starts off with the move bishop takes f6, and it follows up with something like a grift gift sacrifice and a little bit more advanced version of it. Now, if black takes with a knight, I hope that you do know what to do at this point, right? We exploit here the same tactical motifs, bishop takes h7, and we capture the queen and win the game. Time for a celebration. If that doesn't happen, let's take this move back. Let's say your opponent is aware of this, he captures with the bishop. We still take bishop takes h7, <laughs> nevertheless. But in this case, the idea is different. We don't want to win the queen, we want to win the king, so to say. After king takes, we continue with knight to g5, check to the king, and now our opponent h4 performs this really crucial role in defending this knight. Now, knight g5 hits the king, and if black captures it, that doesn't make their life easier, because pawn takes still opens up the rook for this deadly attack, and the king has to go, now queen enters the h-file, and we're winning with the checkmate on the next move. If black tries to create some escape square, we uh, shut it down and we finish it off with queen to h8 anyway. And now let me share with you my favorite way of getting into our gambit stuff. This is not on the move pawn d3, although it's also a decent, completely decent option. But one thing that I don't like about d3 is that if black don't play the most popular move pawn d5, which we want them to play, but they do play something else, then the first move pawn d3 feels slightly passive. Although, of course, it's not a disaster. The game goes on. I mean, you can go into the English opening or into the, you know, uh, e4 stuff. The game goes on, everything's fine. But anyway, it feels slightly passive. And for that reason, I love to play knight c3 first. This move has no downsides. You develop a knight, it's a perfectly fine move. And in most cases, your opponents do play pawn d5. It feels uncomfortable for white because, you know, the pawn is ready to go forward, attack these knights, and uh, somehow controls this square. So in most cases, they do play this move. Now we play pawn e4, again, pretending like we're just offering an exchange here on e4. And if your opponent captures over here, we fool them. We don't take over here, but we instead play our gambit move. And again, this is something that your opponents aren't familiar with completely. I've checked in the database, knight takes e4 was played uh, 1,070,000 times, and the move pawn to d3 was played roughly 20,000 times. So almost nobody really plays it that way. But you will, and you will shock your opponent and will win. Now, black takes here, recapture with the bishop. We have just discussed in the previous example that if black goes knight f6, we play bishop g5, right? We want to develop our queenside pieces out and castle queenside. That's what we want. Now, here's a question you may have. What if they move the other knight instead? Guess what? We're going to do the same stuff. Of course, you can play different moves, but I'll have to play bishop g5, our stuff anyway. We just boldly realize our plan regardless of what your opponent does. That's another beauty of this opening. You just keep pushing the same plan, and it's very effective. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Now, if black goes knight to f6, you know, that transposes into the usual line, right? We play queen e2, castle a queen side, it's just a transposition. What if they try something else? Let's say we take this move back and they say, hey, this bishop on g5 is weird, let me try to kick it off. Let me play pawn f6, gain a tempo, then play pawn e5 and build a beautiful pawn chain in the center of the board. Some of your pawns will think that way, expecting your bishop to retreat, but we never back down. Play queen h5 check to the king, and it turns out that although it's only the sixth move of the game, black is basically, oh, you know, time to resign for black. If g6, we don't hesitate to sacrifice our bishop because we completely open up black's king, and now it's under the massive fire of white's pieces after king to d7, who still castle, as usual, but this time it's a lot more effective. Now this is check to the king, attack of the queen, and this is completely disastrous. You're gonna at least win the queen and keep attacking the king. It's gonna be over within a few moves, I believe.
Let me address a couple more questions that you may have and you will after that have a complete all round opening, universal opening that you can play against any level opponent and uh, you know it's gonna work extremely well. So knight c3, we discussed that in most cases your opponents are gonna play pawn d5 and we know what to do then. What if your opponent chooses to play pawn e5, another standard move for black in an opening? Well, in that case, you can just play pawn to e4 and on the next move continue with bishop to c4 transposing it into the bishop's opening. One of my favorite openings and it works extremely well on amateur level, it is less known, so your opponents again will often be tricked by you in different ways. I'll link my video about the bishop's opening, in fact I have a couple of them if you're curious. And uh, again, there are a lot of pitfalls for black there and you play a completely sound opening, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And another question that you may have is what if after you played knight to c3, black responded pawn d5, you played pawn e4 and instead of taking over here, black pushes the pawn forward pawn d4. At first sight it seems advantageous for black, gaining space advantage, pushing your knight away, but in reality it oftentimes backfires because you move your knight back, after they continue with pawn e5, your knight relocates to g3, a very nice square because in the future, in the middle game, your knight is always ready to jump forward and join the attack you know, against opponent's castle king. So your knight is very well placed here. In many variations of the Rylo Pass, for example, white deliberately transfers their knight from c3 to e2 and they takes time to do that and now you just did this kind of automatically. And another good thing about this version is that if we continue with it, usually black goes pawn c5, you play knight of 3 attacking this pawn, knight c6 to defending them, bishop c4, although theoretically this is a normal, you know, about equal opening position, in reality black has to be extremely, extremely careful because they stretched out a little bit too much without, you know, enough of the defense and they stretched out, you know, controlling this large territory, so you have a lot of opportunities to attack your bishop on c4 is very active attacking this weakness on f7. And let me show you something really funny about this variation. I've opened the database of games and there you can see the statistics of the games played and top moves, top choices of black in this position. In most cases they do play a losing mistake knight to f6. A standard move for black in almost any opening and losing mistake in this particular position because you can go knight g5 and there is simply no sufficient defense for black against your simple threat to capture this pawn either with a bishop or a knight and you just win instantaneously basically. Now. Even if black doesn't fall into this trap, let's take it back, let's check what's the second most popular option of black. Instead of knight of 6, the second most popular move is bishop to d6. And after, let's say you play pawn d3, what they do is they play knight to e7. It feels like, you know, black plays safer, but in fact, they are still falling into very similar stuff. You play knight to g5, same stuff, attacking this pawn twice. Black thinks, okay, no problem, just gonna castle, but that doesn't solve the, the, the problem for black, because you play queen h5, putting more uh, pressure on black, and now not only you hit the f7 square, but you also hit the h7 square, and queen h7 is simply a checkmate in threat, and black completely collapses and, uh, you know, it's completely devastating. So h6 is forced, now you take here on f7, notice that your bishop is always doing a great job in all of these variations. Black has to give up the rook, now you take over here, and the attack goes on, so if king goes to h8, you can see that you can go knight h5 or bishop to h takes h6 is even better, you know, pawn takes, knight h5, threatening, queen to g7, checkmate, and black can't really do anything, you see that white won all of the games here in this position, that's how effective this variation is. And finally, let me provide you with one more idea of how you can make use of this gambit. If you do want to play pawn e4 on the first move, if your opponent responds with the Scandinavian defense, you can still drag your opponent into our gambit. You can continue with the move pawn d3, pretending like you simply defended this pawn. Black just attacked the pawn and you simply defended it. Therefore, your opponent will be fooled to think that you are expecting to recapture over here, but in fact you will play knight c3, entering into our gambit and hopefully win a beautiful game. All in all, I hope that by now you have some completely new out-of-the-box opening weapon which is highly universal because you use it against whatever opening, you don't really care. Instead of the traditional moves which are pawn a4 or pawn d4, you can confuse your opponent by, by playing knight to c3 or maybe pawn on d3 on the first move and you drag your opponent into our gambit. Also, as we discussed at the beginning, you can use the same opening variation as black against d4 which is also cool and uh, anyway, let me know what you think about it in the comments below, I'm curious to know it's a new idea and I'm curious to know how it worked out for you. Of course, I hope that it's gonna work tremendously well. Also, if you love this opening, I've got another video where I analyze a somewhat similar opening variation. A lot of ideas are similar, so I think they'll come to each other really well. You can click the link over here and check it out right now. Wish you a great rest of the day. Ciao!